Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2020 San Francisco. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are Thursday, day four of the RSA show here in Moscone in San Francisco. It's a beautiful day outside, but the show is still going. 40,000 plus people, a couple of challenges with coronavirus and some other things going on. But you know, everybody's here, everybody's staying the course, and I think it's really, you know, kind of a good message going forward as to what's going to happen in the show season. We go to a lot of shows. It's 2020, the year we're going to know everything with the benefit of hindsight. It's not quite working out so far that way, but we're bringing in the experts to share the knowledge, and we're excited for our next guest who's going to help us get to know what the answers are. He's Oliver Sherman, Senior Director, Enterprise Product Marketing for Juniper Networks. Oliver, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, so first off, just kind of general impressions of the show. I'm sure you've been coming here for, uh, for a little while. We have, and I, I think the show's going very well. As you pointed out, there's a couple of, uh, of challenges that are around, but I think everybody's staying strong and, and pushing through and really you know, driving the agenda of security. So I got some interesting quotes for, from you uh, doing a little research uh, for the segment. You said 2019 was the year of enforcement, but 2020 is the year of intelligence. What did you mean by that? Specifically, that's around Juniper. We have a Juniper Connected Security message and strategy that we proved last year by increasing the ability to enforce on all of your infrastructure without having to rip and replace technologies. For instance, on our uh, widely rolled up uh, our MX uh, routing platform, we offer second tell to block things like command and control traffic. Or on our switching line for campus and data center, we prevent lateral threat propagation with second tell allowing you to block hosts as they're infected. And as we rounded that out, and it's a little bit in 2020, we were able to now deliver that on our MIST or our wireless acquisition that we did last year around this time. So showing the integration of that product portfolio. Yeah, we, uh, we met Bob, Bob Friday from MIST. Uh, Excellent. Doing the, um, Doing the AI, the, 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 some of the ethics around AI sure. uh, at, at your guys' conference last year it was a pretty interesting conversation. But let's break down what you said a little bit deeper. So you're talking about kind of inside your own, own kind of product suite and managing threats kind of across once they get to that level to keep things clean across kind of that first layer of defense. Right, well, I mean, whether you're a good packet or a bad packet, <laughs> um, you have to traverse the network to be interesting. We've all you know, put our phones in airplane mode at Black Hat or events like that because we don't want them to be on it. They're really boring when they're offline, but they're also really boring to attackers when they're offline. As soon as you turn them on, you have a problem, or could have a problem. But as things traverse the network, what better place to see who and what's on your network than on the gear? At the end of the day, we're able to provide that visibility, we're able to provide that enforcement. So as you mentioned, 2020 is now the year of uh, awareness for us, so the Threat Aware Network. We're able to do things like look at encrypted traffic, do heuristics and analysis to figure out, should that even be on my network? Because as you bring it into a network, and you have to decrypt it, A, there's privacy concerns with that uh, in these times, but also it's computationally expensive to do that, so it becomes a challenge from a both a financial perspective as well as a compliance perspective. So we're helping solve that so you can kind of offset that traffic and be able to uh, ensure your network's secure. So is that relatively new, and I apologize, I'm not deep into the, to the, to the weeds of feature functionality, but that sounds pretty interesting that you can actually start to do the analysis without encrypting the data and get, a, and get some meaningful, insightful uh, information. Absolutely, we actually announced it on Monday at 4.45 uh, a.m. <laughs> Pacific, so it is, it is <laughs> brand, new. Brand new. Yes. And what's the, what's the secret sauce to be able to do that? Because it, you know, one would think just by rule, you know, encryption would, would eliminate the ability to really do, do the analysis. So what kind of analysis can you still do while still keeping the data encrypted? You're absolutely right. Um, we, we're seeing 70 to 80% of uh, internet traffic is now encrypted. Uh, furthermore, uh, bad actors are using that to obfuscate themselves, right, obviously. Um, and then, the kind of the magic to that, though, to, to look at it without having to crack open the package is using things like heuristics that look at connections per second or connection patterns or looking at certificate exchanges or even IP addresses to know this is not something we want to let in. And we're seeing a very high rate of success to block things like uh, IoT botnets, for instance. So you'll be seeing more and more of that from us throughout the year, but this is the initial step that we're taking. Right, that's great, because so much of it, it sounds like, it, well, A, a lot of it's being generated by machines, but two, it sounds like kind of the profile of the attacks keeps changing quite a bit from, you know, kind of concentrated attacks to more, sounds like now everyone's kind of doing the slow creeper uh, to, to try to get in under the covers. Right, and really using your network to your full extent. I mean, a lot of things that we're doing, including trip, encrypted traffic analysis, is an additional feature on our platform. 
So that, that comes with what you already have. So rather than walking in and saying, buy my suite of products, this is all solve all your problems, as we've done for the past, or as other vendors have done for the past 10, 20 years, it's never worked. So why not add things that you already have so you're allowed to amortize your assets, build your best of breed security, and do it with, do it in a multi-vendor environment, but also do it with your infrastructure. Right, so I want to shift gears a little bit, uh, doing some research before you got on. You've always been technical lead. You've been doing technical lead roles. You had a whole bunch of them, and we don't have internet, unfortunately, here, so we can't, I can't read them off. That's fine. And now you've switched over, you put the marketing hat on. I'm just curious, um, you know, kind of the different, kind of softer, squishy challenge of trying to take the, the, the talent that you have, the technical definitions that you have, the, the detailed um, compute and stuff you're doing around things like you just described, and now put in the marketing hat and trying to get that message out to the market, help people understand what you're trying to do, and break through, quite frankly, some crazy noise that we're sitting here surrounded by hundreds if not thousands of vendors. I think that's really the key, and, and yes, I've been technical leads, I've run architecture teams, I've run development teams, and really from a marketing perspective, it's to ensure that we're delivering a message that is that the, that the market will consume that is actually um, based on reality. I think a lot of times you see uh, a lot of products that are put together with duct tape, bailing twine, et cetera, um, but then also have a great PowerPoint that makes it look good, but it, from a go-to-market perspective from, uh, whether it's your sellers, meaning sellers that work for, the, for Juniper, whether it's our partners, whether it's our customers, they have to believe in what's out there, and if it's tried and true, and we understand it from an engineering perspective, and we can, we can say it's not a market texture, it's a strategy, right. that really makes a difference, and we're really seeing that, uh, if you look at our year, year, year over year growth in security, if you look at what analysts are saying, we look at what uh, testing houses are saying about our product, that Juniper's back, so right. that's why I'm in this spot. And it really begs to have a, you know, kind of a deeper relationship with the customer, that you know, you're not selling them a one-off market texture slide, you're not you know, you know, kind of having a quick point solution that suddenly we put together, but really kind of have this trusted ongoing relationship that's going to evolve over time, the products are going to evolve over time, because the threats are evolving over time, right? Absolutely, and help them get more out of what they already have, and from a go-to-market perspective, our partners have an addressable market just naturally through the install base that we have. They're able to provide additional value and services for those customers that may want to lean on a partner to actually build some of these solutions for them. Right. Well, Oliver, well, thanks for uh, for stopping by. I'm glad I'm not too late on the uh, on the encryption <laughs> on the encrypted analysis game. So just a couple of days. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for uh, for stopping by. Best to you and good luck with the with 2020. The year we'll know everything. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. He's Oliver. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at RSA 2020 here in Moscone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.